Hello, everyone, and welcome to the one o'clock session of the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. You know, in this session, we are happy to introduce the topic grid architecture. Our participants are Andrew Stricker, better known as Spinoza Quinnell, and hey, it's me, Lear Lobo. Uh, my last name is C uh, Cynthia Colloin. There we go. Dr. Andrew Stricker, Spinoza Quinnell, is an education and innovation analyst with Air University, and he conducts research in advances in cognitive sciences and artificial intelligence for innovative applications in professional military education. His research addresses augmented cognition and developmental growth in reflective mindsets and contemplative practices. Dr. Cynthia Colloin, Lear Lobo, is a professor of doctoral studies at Colorado Technical University and a software engineer who supported Air Force Space Command. She conducts research at Virtual Harmony and dreams of strengthening the future of virtual worlds. She worked on the design of Bar Karma, a TV series sponsored by and led by Will Wright, the lead designer of the games The Sims, SimCity, and Spore. Spinoza and Lear with Apollo Seagull received the $25,000 grand prize for their space simulation, the Mars Expedition Strategy Challenge, in the Federal Virtual World Challenge. Please check the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC20. Well, welcome everyone. Let's begin the session. So Andy, you know, I have to admit, the reason we're up here is I kept thinking, you know, the way we're doing things seems to be a little different than what I see in other grids. And of course, I'm having such a fantastic time teaching my virtual world class for St. Martin's University, this, this term, that I wanted to share our grid architecture. Andy, over to you. Okay, great. Well, as always, it's, it's a wonderful uh, pleasure to be with the Open Sim community. I uh, always look forward to the opportunity to get together with everyone. Uh, I guess uh, between uh, Lear and I, we've been working on this grid for almost 13 years off and on. Um, uh, we got started helping the Air Force uh, get involved with um, immersive 3D worlds and we kind of grew out um, our work with other educators and some of you have heard about us from time to time, but this this visual we have on display here, um, you know, I, I like because, you know, there's a lot of mechanics that go beneath the surface <laughs> to support the kind of immersive uh, experiences that we all value when we come together in communities. And we'll talk more at our later panel session about the community work. But um, if we move to the next slide, Sin, um, I'll kind of highlight what the grid really serves. And I'll just be brief because I'll spend most of the time on, on the one after the slide after this one. But this is a visual that we'll talk about during our panel. But um, the the architecture serves a purpose. <clears throat> you know, we're we're sort of like a Radio Shack enthusiast uh, with all the technology, but um, at heart, we uh, we really value what we can do with each other in the spirit of our uh, shared experiences. And uh, and the Open Sim community has given us a wonderful environment in which to put together. You'll see here in this in this uh, visual that among ourselves um, that have been involved with Virtual Harmony over the past several years, we've got people that write the stories and the scripts for envisioning what we can put together in our 3D spaces. And then we've got people, and I'm, I'm kind of one of those, we're an architect where we love to design and, and, and create, uh, you know, the kinds of interactive models that are put out into the, the virtual spaces. And, and then we've got people that, that you, know, um, you know, help create the simulations and the simulations, you know, um, do a lot of things with supporting how we collect data and, and, the, and the kinds of ways that people are learning about 
the SIM or the STEAM areas. And we, we as Lear talked about, we support our, our uh, students as well as some uh, nonprofits. And we, we have a lot um, um, that we try very hard to create you know, the learning simulation so that they're fun and engaging. So as Lear mentioned, our dear, dear friend, um, Barbara Truman, she <clears throat> she couldn't be with us. She's not doing well, but um, she's our inspiration. Uh, we represent her in the center image in the middle. Um, we've worked on this uh, Mars simulation for quite a few years with NASA JPL, and we have a version of it in open sim as well. But Barbara is always there and inspiring us to take our imaginations further with the are the possible. So I just wanted to show this slide to kind of say what our architecture really is is doing um, to make things possible. Uh, so Let's you go talk to the next about one. that. No, well, let's just wait for just one moment because you brought up such an important point. At the top of the slide, you guys will notice it says hybrid cloud grid architecture. But what you see underneath is about people and emotions and content that comes alive. It's like it's like when you read a book and the book caught you and drew you into it so deeply that you became the story. And that's what Open Simulator does for us. It's not just a place for creativity and for visual visualizing all these amazing uh, experiences, learning opportunities, or even cool scenes from history, from fantasy, from whatever. It's the fact that it changes us. It strengthens, strengthens us, it feeds our spirit, it makes, uh, makes us joyful. And that's what we're trying to convey. Now, Andy, by the way, drew this slide. And so for someone who scripts and does mesh design and, and does amazing uh, you know, planning of our simulations and all, this is a wonderful way of depicting how we feel and how thankful we are that you are here for each one of you, how you contribute to the Open Simulator software, to the viewers, to the research, to the learning experiences, every one of you, you're part of us, and we wanted to thank you. Now I'll go on, Andy. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, I, I'm so glad that you you, you share your thoughts and reflections on that because you, you, you have a wonderful way of, of sharing the deeper purposes and what we're trying to do with the architecture. Thank you. Th this visual um, is a high level uh, view of all the different parts that go into the the grid architecture. And as uh, Lear has has talked about, uh, it is a hybrid uh, architecture. So we have uh, components that operate in the cloud, and then we have uh, components that operate um, on Linux servers. Uh, independent from the cloud, but they're interconnected. And so we move data back and forth. On, on the um, far right hand side, you, you can see the 12 grids that we currently uh, have operating uh, around the clock. And so we've got um, many more grids, but these are these 12 grids are the ones that uh, seem to have um, um, durability. And, and the things that we've been developing over the past several years in our simulations. And so, you know, the, the things that uh, we try to do is, is figure out, you know, between multiple types of platforms, how best to support the learning simulations that we design, develop, and employ. And, uh, and some of the things I'm going to share, I know quite a few of you have been uh, working with at various levels of details and and so forth over the years. So some of this won't be uh, that novel, but but we we we've have over the past few years, um, you know, have Open Sim as our home base, and then we uh, supplant um, some of our uh, simulations with the use of Unity. And one of the things that we really like about combining Open Sim and Unity is there's so much that we can uh, repurpose, and and particularly. Uh, in the uh, uh, the data that we're collecting with our Unity SIMs and our Open SIM, uh, that that goes into a dashboard. And I'll talk to that here in a minute more in the details of what we do with our dashboards. But and, and then all many of you know, of course, the the mesh models. Uh, we 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 
multi-purpose them across the Unity platform and Open Sim. And so um, we find that um, you know even with our scripts between uh, Open Sim and Unity, we 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 have a great uh, uh, benefits with repurposing the scripts as well in C sharp. So the, that's a wonderful way uh, in, in, in how we can, um, you know, support the immersive aspects. And, and also with our Unity uh, components, we off, often offer a lot of uh, interfaces through um, the web browser. So people, while they're in a particular open SIM environment, can access uh, some of the web interfaces as well. And then, so if you look at the left hand side, um, you know, as, as we span this kind of hybrid structure, we, we have, um, um, you know, put a great deal of effort in the data of collecting data from users, storing that data, and, and you, having that data be uh, actively um, used uh, in a reciprocal way back into the simulation. So, so even though the data is being stored in da dashboards, the data off also feeds back into the simulation in the um, in the ways that um, people interact back and forth with our devices. So we do use, um, you know, uh, AWS as our cloud uh, platform, and and all of our servers, even the ones off the cloud and on the cloud, are Ubuntu, uh, Linux. Uh, servers that, that we're employing. And so uh, that served us, that has really served us very well, keeping things on Linux. Uh, we've, we, we've been um, able to keep our grids running. Uh, I don't think, Lear, I don't think we've ever had any grid really go down. Uh, we've taken grids down to update certain <laughs> things, but, uh, but we've, had, we've, had, yeah. we've had tremendous, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's been but pretty good. The reason good. I'm chuckling is I was teaching one Monday night, and all of a sudden the server dropped right as we were going on break. It was back online five, ten minutes later, and, and Andy says, well, we had a Linux update <laughs> right in the middle yeah. of class. And it was so fast and so wonderful. You know, uh, I had to laugh. But, um, but no, we haven't had any downtime, and that's like a miracle. when you I teach three-hour blocks with 14 students, you know, 13 students and uh, in an undergraduate and graduate class and we are very busy we're very active we got a lot of content and so this grid architecture has really been transformational for me because I I don't have to contend with a lot of lag and I don't have to fight the server resources now I have to admit I can render or res a whole bunch of content you know those of you who know me know I normally have 200,000 pieces in my inventory right so um, I will, I will, in my enthusiasm, pull a lot of stuff out, and I can certainly slow things down a little bit, but that's almost by design as opposed to the server responding that way. Anyway, the, yeah. the, the, the link to the slides is in the text chat, so if you uh, wanted to look at them a little easier, if you're having trouble seeing them, please take a look there. Back to you, Andy. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we always seem to end up trying to squeeze as much as we can possibly squeeze into our slides uh, real estate space. <laughs> but uh, that's a good good thing you've done to make the slides available there. Thank you. Um, so so when you when you go to the it, towards the middle of the, of the slide, you can see more of the details of the types of services <coughs> that we offer in in our virtual machine. So all of our all of our grids are are operated as um, independent virtual machines and with shared databases and so uh, and, and and we package the virtual machines with um, you know uh, authorization um, services from Amazon as well as the email services and and the, the types of things that you normally would expect you know with you know um, web inter services like Tomcat and secure sign on and, um, and we have a couple of interesting things that we've added um, uh, fairly recently with Lambda. So we've got scripts that don't really run behind the scenes that only run when when we call for them through Lambda services. And then uh, we implemented the learning um, uh, record store um, that um, 
has helped us with, you know, uh, moving data back and forth between our Unity and our open sim environments with uh, experienced API calls. And then, and then one of the things that's really interesting that we got involved with is integrating some of our Python work. And so we've got um, several things running behind the scenes with um, um, our neural nets that support um, our work. And so you can actually um, go out there and see, um, you know, through our Mars simulation, the, the how our, our neural uh, interface operates and so uh, we've been we've been fine tuning that for almost two years now with the AI applications but now it's grown and it has now an AI bibliography that's collected and it's meta tagged that supports the AI engine uh, for feeding research uh, articles back to the users on the types of challenges associated with long duration human space flight. And, um, and then we also have um, uh, a neural net that supports the predictive um, capabilities for our uh, players where the, it will actually help uh, instructors see, you know, what is the predictive levels of the sim play that uh, based on certain data that we've collected on on our players that would be helpful to know in advance if they're having troubles uh, going from um, different levels of our of our sims it gives a really nice uh, uh, interface for um, giving that kind of data back and the dashboard uh, is entirely web interface so uh, across all of our sims, you can you can you can see the um, performance data of our sim players and get a uh, extract out that data for you know re research analysis and SPSS packages and so forth. So it's very very capable. It it sends out the data in in all kinds of different formats for people doing research. And we've had several of our students over the years uh, use the environment for their um, you know, research projects. Andy, we, I'm going to get a word in. Andy, I'm going to get a word in. Oh, go ahead. Um, yep. Because we only have a couple minutes left, and I want to make sure if anyone yep. has questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. I'll actually pay attention to it again, right? And <laughs> secondly, I don't know if you guys are looking at the right hand side of our slide, but you'll notice all of those little scenes you see there. And I'm sure Andy's illustrated this, but I was posting our slides, right? Um, are the 12 grids we've been talking about. And each one of them strikes a mood or explores a moment in history or works on the mission to Mars in the space program, works on complicated and complex challenges or reflects on the past and what we can learn from it to shape our future. And I just wanted to illustrate that. That's been a real place of healing for us. And I'll, I'm going to do a plug for our next session, which is in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> where we're going to give more detail, not not as much on the tech side perhaps, although we might do some, but more on how we use these grids in new and interesting ways. And one other thought here, when Andy explained to me, we're using the Mariah database and how we can replicate that and how we can stabilize. I don't know if he's told you, he's running all this on a, a Mac server with 32 gigabytes of RAM, right? I don't know about you, but I normally don't run 12 grids on, on a Mac server, you know, running Linux. <laughs> and so, and he's kicking it from the farmhouse, right, in, a, in, the, in the south, a lovely spot. And we're going to show you a little bit of what that means to us in the next hour. Well, Andy, we have one minute to wrap up, and I'm looking at the text chat, but I don't see any questions at this time. Uh, over to you. Okay, great. The the um, so so what's really nice about the um, Mariah um, database? It it uses a MySQL protocol, and um, it it has a, a capability to deal with large data blobs, and so we can actually gain a pretty significant um, improvement with how. Uh, our data is is moved back and forth uh, using the Mariah uh, DB uh, protocol for for MySQL, and we're also using 
uh, the um, born uh, uh, shell mode when we call up all of our grids and activate them. And so that has gave us act ad added benefits too with the uh, uh, advantages with our CPUs. And so uh, that's that's pretty beneficial. But we can we can Again, we can do a lot. I'm uh, so sorry yep. to interrupt you, but we're now at the end of time. And we did have one question that I'll answer as we're signing off here. And it is um, from Kevin. He asks if we're posted online somewhere. And Kevin, as you know, we we keep the ports open to hypergrid back and forth. And we do have some security up. So we have an interesting set of experiences with our hypergrid experiences. And we'll talk about that in the next hour. If you want to come visit us, let me know, and I will certainly give you an invitation to join us, and you can try out our simulations or do things. But we're, we're not pub published in CVL or on Hyperica or any of the public sites to answer your question. How do we yeah. integrate? Oh, and the question. Yeah, you want to handle yeah, that? Yeah, the question on, on it. Yeah, the, the question on the integration of Unity and OpenSIM is done through our data architecture. So, so um, and our and our scripts. And so, what we have is um, a, a really cool situation where we can we can have a combination of Unity applications running with the OpenSIM, and we use Unity as appliances. <laughs> so we have appliances that people interact. Uh, through the Unity, I mean through the Open Sim uh, larger simulation, and they and they and they use like either a, a Unity mobile application appliance or a web application appliance, and and then also um, you know we, we'll pull data out of Unity that's stored and feed it back into Open Sim. So that's how we do the integration. So it's all about Open Sim, and we just think of that as a tool. Well, thanks everyone. I'm going to turn it back over to yeah, the moderator, you. who is me, and say, <laughs> hey, thank you for a great, <laughs> where's that hook when you need it, right? Thank you, Andy, for a terrific interview.